remember when you asked me why I didn't vote for Kamala Harris and how could I be so anti-black woman? Let me show you. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you. So while you were standing in line in your chucks and pearls, thinking that she was a black woman because she went to all the right schools, she pledged the right people because everybody knows that the black vote is the unknown variant. That means that they truly show up for what it is that they support. And the black community embraced and supported Kamala. When Kamala got in office, she told y'all that she wasn't black and she identified as otherwise. After she had utilized your educational system, your support, your fraternities, your sororities, and she turned around and gave you her ass to kiss. Y'all gonna vote for her again? Inquiring minds wanna know. Hey guys, my name is Devore Darkens. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, I'm going to be actually reacting to these ads. One ad is an old one from Kamala Harris against President Trump. Uh, it's been going viral lately, and so we're going to react to that. And then I'm going to show you the new ad that the Trump campaign is using against Kamala Harris. And I want to identify what's true, what's false. And let's understand what's really going on before I get into all of this. Uh, Joe Biden dropped out of the race. Okay, we all know that. Kamala Harris is the one being endorsed. She raised a lot of money on day one. And uh, we're going to start to see things get a little crazy, especially with the media. And there's going to be a lot of people choosing sides. And there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say Kamala Harris is the best option. And uh, they're going to continue to call President Trump racist. And he's Hitler. And he's this and he's that. And, and they're going to continue to do things like that. And so I want to bring to your guys' attention that Kamala Harris, she's not the actual best candidate. Uh, she's yet to be proven, meaning she has not really gone out there and made a true case to be president. Just because you are the vice president doesn't mean you, you can be a successful president, if that makes sense. Usually when they select vice presidents, they're not selecting them because they truly believe they can be a president. They're selecting them because they know they can be controlled and they can use them when they need to. And they're not going to get in the way of the actual president. So it, that's usually the way that it goes. However, she's been endorsed and uh, it looks like they're riding with her. But before they do, other challengers are appearing and they also want to put their name in the hat as well, like Joe Manchin, for example. So some people are saying the Democrats need to have an open convention, let everyone who wants to, to run for president on the Democrat side, let them all show up, let's do some debates, let's show what they got, and then we'll choose the best candidate. Now, let me just tell you guys this. If the Democrats are smart, that's exactly what they would do. They need the best candidate who will beat Donald Trump, not the one that, you know, was the vice president. And so she automatically should be running for president just because she was the vice president doesn't mean she should run for president. So um, anyways, there, there's that that doesn't mean there's something against her. It just means that if Donald Trump is this threat to democracy, as they've been telling everybody, do you honestly believe Kamala Harris is the best to beat him? Right. And a lot of people on the Democrat side do not believe that, by the way. OK, and even the numbers show that. So before we get into everything, you know, you guys already know, like, share and subscribe. Let's play the video. And the headline Savannah is right now, at least not that much different. Take a look. This is an average of the 10 national polls that have come out since that debate last month. Yeah, Trump at 47, Harris at 46. If you ran this same average, Biden versus Trump, it was a two point Trump lead. So very, very slight improvement to start out. But obviously that's something that's within the margin of error there. Democrats are really kind of. And by the way, this is without people actually seeing her in a debate and starting to see how much. Um, She's not a great speaker, by the way. OK, uh, once you really start to pay attention to her and the spotlight 
is starting to appear on her, people are going to start to realize, well, wait a minute, maybe this is not the best option. See, listen, let's understand where we're at. The only reason why she's going to get a significant amount of support is because people emotionally hate Donald Trump and they don't even know why. They're just programmed to hate him. So that's what's going to happen. But if you were really objectively true about what's going on here and you truly saw her perform in the spotlight and you, then you saw him perform in the spotlight, the, that number would be even more of, of a gap. But let's, let's keep going. In the same place. And so what about the key groups? Does she perform better with particular groups? And does that open up a path or other states potentially? And I thought this was interesting in our own most recent NBC poll. Here are some groups when you match Harris against Trump where she actually fares better than Biden did. Headline there is black voters, almost a 10 point difference there. Harris improvement, the left wing of the Democratic base, Sanders, Warren voters and folks 35 to 49 years old. The flip side, though, is Trump improves in some areas with Harris in the race, at least according to our poll. Here you see Republican voters who aren't satisfied Trump's their nominee. Think Haley voters here, white males with college degrees. These two groups, I think you tend. Yeah, as you can see, they, there's people who don't like Trump, but they are not going to vote for Kamala Harris. That's the bottom line. That's what that says right there. Like, hey, I don't like Trump. I want it Haley, but I'd rather go with Trump before I go with Kamala Harris. Understand something. Joe Biden was not running the presidency. It was reported that he wasn't even having cabinet meetings, meaning all of those executive departments, right? All those cabinet positions and people trying to pass legislation through Congress. The last time he had a meeting was like in the first year of his presidency. He was not having that very often. He was not actually involved, right? So it was really Nancy Pelosi that was running things. And I say all that to say that... Um, if if you think people didn't like Joe Biden, she's right there behind him. People don't really like her either. And it has more to do with the policies uh, and the performance during her initial debate than anything else. But let's go ahead and check out the ad that was put out that's going viral against Trump. Sick of this. Well, think about this. He's a world leader in temper tantrums. She never loses her cool. She prosecuted sex predators. He is one. Grab him by the She shut down for-profit colleges that swindled Americans. He was a for-profit college. At Trump University, we teach success. Literally. He's owned by the big banks. She's the attorney general who beat the biggest banks in America and forced them to pay homeowners $18 billion. He's tearing us apart. She'll bring us together. This is Trump. And in every possible way, this is the anti-Trump. So if that's what you're looking for in your next president, there's really only one. Kamala. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? Uh, you know, good ad on them, obviously, but it's most of it's not even true. Okay, so number one. Uh, she was not an attorney general at the federal level, so I don't I don't know what banks particularly that she took down that I can recall. I mean, do your own research on that one. Uh, the other one about uh, Trump being uh, a world leader of uh, throwing a tantrum, I find that to be funny too. I I really do believe the I would say the only mistake if you're gonna call it one, and I see both sides. No one wanted Donald Trump to become the president back in 2016. Like, no one. And they literally did everything in their power to prevent that from happening. This is the media included. So the media and the government, and this is Republicans too, by the way. You got to understand this. Both sides, they do not want someone who's anti-establishment running for president, okay? They don't. Because that means he's not controlled. It doesn't matter what side you're on on this one. So he's running for president with his own money, okay? His own name. He doesn't need their money. He doesn't need them to win the presidency. And so you had the you had the Democrats, you had the Republicans, and you had the media all trying to make sure this guy did not win the presidency. And what happened? He won anyway. So so from day one of him getting in, and then speaking his mind. It was an absolute war between the media and President Trump. And so the media 
fact that they will fact check him every step of the way, but they will not do the same thing for the Democrats. They will not fact check Kamala Harris. They did not fact check Joe Biden. They don't do these things. Okay. Every step of the way, it was resistance. It's like as if they had zero respect for him winning the presidency. And most cases, including Hillary Clinton, they call him an illegitimate president, meaning he wasn't a real president. So these ads that they're going to run and that they had ran in the past is coming from that place, not necessarily policies. It's coming from assassinate his character, make people scared of him, get people to see that he's the next Hitler, get people to see that he's racist, even though none of it is really rooted in facts. It's all twisted. So let's check out what his camp is releasing against Kamala Harris. Kamala was in on it. She covered up Joe's obvious mental decline. Our president is in good shape, in good health, tireless, vibrant, and I have no doubt about the strength of the work that we have done. But Kamala knew Joe couldn't do the job, so she did it. Look what she got done. A border invasion, runaway inflation, the American dream, dead. They created this mess. They know Kamala owns this failed record. Okay, so you guys seen that, right? Um, now, you could argue that is absolutely rooted in truth, truth, right? Because, number one, she was actually in charge of managing the border when they first came in, and she was nowhere to be found at the border. And the border only got worse. We've been through those numbers already. We looked it up. We went on the website. Do your own research, but I did a video on that already, okay? that That is undisputed. You cannot fact check that. It is because it is a fact, Okay. That's number one. Number two, inflation is also a fact that things have not improved for the American people. Everything costs more money. There's there's no way to argue that if you are the Democrats. So they need to stop trying to continue to, to use fear mongering to get people to not vote for Trump and start talking about what you're going to do for people, basically. Um, so there's that as well. And then the other thing, she is absolutely complicit in the cover up with President Biden. I mean, let's just be honest with it. Right. Think, think about this. The Democrats claim that they are the party of democracy. Right. That they are the ones taking care of the American people. But these are the same ones that would call people conspiracy theorists when we pointed out that President Biden looked like he was not all there. Right. Those are the same people who are gaslighting me and you and saying no, the economy is doing great, even though we know it's costing more money to do the things that we want to do or just to pay for basic things like electricity or groceries or gas. But they keep saying, nope, it's all good. These are the same people, by the way, same people that told you, hey, President Trump, don't let him get into office. He's going to start a war. Don't don't let him get near the the red button. Right. But it's the same people that have what? Israel and Hamas, Russia and Ukraine, Iran. So we have to pay attention. We, we can't get caught up in our feelings because that's what they're going to use. They're going to roll out the, the old playbook. They're going to use race. They already are doing it right now. They're already calling her the first black American woman to run for president. She's not black American. OK, she's Jamaican. They would have been better off just saying Jamaican, Indian, American, but they're not going to do that. They're going to use the word black because they know if they use that word, it's going to get black people's attention. Right. Number one. Number two, she's female. They're going to use that too. Hey, woman right here running for president. They're absolutely going to use that. And they're going to try to paint Donald Trump as a racist when, in fact, it's not true. It just isn't. So pay attention, protect your mind, understand what's going on here and start uh, realizing that the media, I mean, they're basically propaganda companies, right? So they just say what the politicians want them to say, but it's usually on the Democratic side. I mean, Fox News kind of will say what the Republicans are saying, but that's it. That's all they got. You got ABC, 
CBS, MSNBC, CNN. All of these media companies are going to come out and they're going to prop her up like the second coming to Jesus Christ. And they're going to use that she's a woman. They're going to use the color of her skin. And they're going to try to play those identity politics playbook and get people triggered and get people to vote for her because they are scared of President Trump. But under his presidency, what was there to be scared of? Under President Biden and her presidency, what was there to be scared of? Rising costs, wars in the Middle East, the borders wide open, right? Just do, the, just do your research. Well, that's all I got today, guys. That's my mindset. I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think about these ads? What do you think about the polling numbers? What do you think about this just entire story that she's now being the one that's going to be anointed? I want you guys to answer that and more in the comment section below. I'll check you guys out in the next video, and I'll see you in the next one.